the head and his head to three times. And after that, with whatever power you had, whatever love for Hashem, whatever feelings you had, you said, I don't know you, who will I him? I don't know you, who will I him? And you said it seven times. Think back. Think of what was going on with you. 50,000 Jews in Uman were saying the same thing. 200,000 Jews in Brooklyn were saying the same thing. 20,000 men and women in Lakewood were saying the same thing. Three, four hundred thousand men strolling, yelling, I don't know who will I him? My friend, I don't care what the bloggers say. I don't care what the Wall Street Journal says. What the Daily News said, I don't care about that. I don't know who I am. He's our God. And I don't for a minute want to discount the problem. Don't think for a second that I don't worry and I don't sleep about what's going on in college. Don't think for a second. It's dead, it's getting worse, and we have to do something about it. And there are probably more girls and boys going up for the first time, and the younger. Lord, I don't know you. Who is my name? God is our God, the only God. Yiddish guy is not imploding. It's not exploding. It's being battered. Every person in this room. Every therapist in this room, and I think about this all the time. This week, we said, we also leave Mignosh for Shechan to the sofa. We make a Mignosh and Hashem will rest. And the Mephoshim say, the Sochan, they'll rest in the Jewish people. Because we don't have a base of Mignosh and Mishnah. So the base of Mignosh is now in us. We Shechan to the Sochan in you. Every therapist in this room has holiness. You're so coming down. And what you are trying to give out to your clients, I'm not talking about that so Yiddish guy. You're giving them hope. You're giving them peace. You're giving them emuna. You are making them little based on the dust. That's what we're doing. As an average, and as therapist. So for me to address this group, this group of people that want to make Colossal a better person despite what's going on, despite again what everybody wants to say. And even those bloggers that say, I want to help you this time. They're not helping. You know how I help you this guy? By helping people like you do. Make them happier people. Give them a simcha sachayim. Give them a reason to live. That's what brings me to the final subject today. Our guest of honor. Moish Mangrowski. Whatever I said about a person that has the amuna and has the goal in life to make people healthy and Yiddish at the same time. Moish began a social work career with the New York Welfare Department. They were doing home visits. He moved to a staff position in Michigan. In 1980, he became the Assistant Clinical Director of Counterforce, an agency formed by Charles Rosero. In that position, he has directed one of the major agencies in the Orthodox world, offering counseling to schools, interactive workshops. He also represents Counterforce on the Task Force on Families and Children at Risk. 
1983, he became clinical director of the Italy Bell Helpline, the first volunteer telephone helpline for the Jewish community, manned by 40 mental health volunteers. Thousands of people have been helped. Perhaps most important in Moshe's tireless advocacy for mental health services. This can take the form of meeting with government grand overseers, pressing his superiors at Turner Serve for greater awareness of mental health, or creating a registry for sex offenders. Moshe has been particularly passionate about the problem of sexual abuse. He's taken positions sometimes that are not so popular. Moshe Mangrovsky is the Yossili Mikdash. He wants to make a Mikdash in every person. The Shafanti Besalchan, so that the Rabbanishon can reside in those people. It is my pleasure to give the Esther Solomon Award to my good and dear friend, Moshe Mangrovsky. You know, I was told, uh, I think something like I have 22 minutes and my speech is all of seven minutes. I'm not a long speaker. So I'm going to just say one thing that's not in the speech and then I'll proceed with the speech. Um, I want to very much thank everybody who came, especially, you know, to, to, from my benefit, uh, whatever. Uh, the whole thing's very embarrassing to me, you'll have to excuse me. But I, I, I want to make one special, special thank you, and that's to my dear wife, Barbara. She should live and be well. Some of you may know that in the last year or two, she's been in and out of hospitals more than anybody should ever have to be in and out of hospitals. As, we, as recently as a week ago, she spent four days in the hospital couldn't eat anything for the last few months. Baruch Hashem, that procedure went well. So uh, I may have asked for Yom and her, Shana, it should be good. And thanks for, thanks for being here, and thanks to the Rabbinah Shalom for making it happen. Thank you so much. It's really with great humility that I accept the Esther Solomon Memorial Award. I knew Esther Allah Shalom well, both as a colleague and as a friend in the community. And I'm sure that quite a little known fact about her employment resume is that she actually worked for Counterforce as a school counselor about 30 years ago while she was in graduate school pursuing her professional career as a physical therapist. Many of us do know what a superlative physical therapist she was over so many years, but I can also tell you that in the year or so that she did counseling for us, she did quite a nice job as well. She was not trained as a mental health professional, but her unbelievable caring and dedication to her clients, which was probably as important as her tremendous skills were in making her the wonderful physical therapist that she was, showed itself as well in the way she counseled students. 
with only the benefit of good supervision and in-house training. Those of you who know me know that I am not one for long speeches. In fact, I always shy away from the podium. I will just make two points that are warranted from my point of view. Number one, this award to me is really more deserving of my counterforce mentor, Rabbi Moshe Achiel Friedman, Zechat Sanat Lebracha. Without Rabbi Friedman, I could not have achieved what I did at counterforce. Rabbi Friedman, who was Nifter four years ago, was truly an innovator. He had been a yeshiva principal in the 1950s and 1960s, who understood the need for mental health services in yeshivas before anyone else did. Oftentimes, when the New York City Board of Education evaluated one of his students, they would return a recommendation that the yeshiva day was too long, so a switch to public school with its shorter day would go a long way to alleviating the child's issues. Each time that occurred, Rabbi Frieden became more convinced of the need to develop a professional program that would be guided by Torah principles. And he did just that. He created Counterforce, a division of Torah to serve, one of the first, if not the first, from mental health programs. So I accept this award for myself and Rabbi Friedman Satsal. Although I strongly resist accepting the awards, Rabbi Friedman was even worse that way. He probably would have turned Nefesh down for this award if he was still alive today. However, our relationship was so unique that though there were things that he personally would not do because of who he was, even if there were no halakhic or ethical constraints, that he would allow or even encourage me to do. I feel confident that Rabbi Friedman is looking down from Gan Eden and feeling pride for my receiving this award, and almost as confident that he is not too upset with me for sharing the award with him. My second point is that if I wanted to point to what probably has been and still is my strongest mission, if you will, in my professional career is the battle of